Welcome to Unscripted Gaming. My name is Josh. I'm Mike. I'm uh, dying. Uh, don't mind me. I'm Stan. Gentlemen, how are we oh. doing today? Uh, other than the dying, I'm just fine. How are you? How are we doing? I mean, I'm kind of dying too, but other than that, I've been great. Stan? I'm cool. Yeah, We're all yeah. dying. Everyone is dying. It's okay. Uh, you, speaking of people, physically speaking. <laughs> thank you for the setup, Mike. But speaking of dying, we're gonna jump right into it. No foreplay. Yeah, we've got lots of news to cover. So, Lions Head Studio, they're dying. Fable Legends, it's dying. Wait, wait, was that opening just so you could segue into Lions Head? Uh, Mike, dude, Mike set me up. Don't blame me on this one. So I, had Lions that, I didn't have that that's plan. Fair. No, that's... no, no, no. Uh, okay, all right. You that, guys can just, just go at it for a few more seconds. Just just come on. Just get it all out at once. Just just get it all away. <laughs> uh, Josh, hey, we're going to talk about something stupid with this awesome transition. Stan, that transition sucked. Josh, I thought it was okay. Stan, we'll make your next one better. Okay, I already did it I already did it for both of you already. So now you never have to do it again. Okay, Lions It's going to happen like it's going to happen like next time. I already have transitions no. to other games, other uh, topics uh, planned, so oh God. I'm so sorry to everyone out there. Go, totally. I <laughs> go ahead, Josh. Go ahead. What is the story? Anyway, so uh, <laughs> Microsoft announced that uh, Fable Legends and Project Knoxville, the uh, game being worked on by Press Play, have both been canceled uh, in that Lion's Head Studio is facing closure and Press Play is definitively been shut down. They're they are no longer going to be... Uh, I don't know if that means that there's still some potential that Lion Head might remain in existence. Uh, there, there have been some Transition conflicting reports. or downsize. Yeah, there, there have been some conflicting reports since the story initially broke, so it's not 100% clear whether or not uh, they're going to continue to exist in whatever fashion. Uh, but as of right now, press play is definitely gone, and Lion's Head is in uh, kind of a transitional period, and the, the games that they were both working on have been canceled. Uh, as we know, that uh, Lionhead is the is the home of uh, Peter Molyneux. It's founding Not that anymore. studio. Not Yeah, uh, he has he has since moved on to yeah. a smaller studio called Two Cans, which has twenty two cans. Uh, twenty two cans, yes. And they've made uh, Godus and Godus Wars and not it's doing totally too totally pronounced Godus. Godus Godus. And they're not doing too hot. <laughs> Unlike Lionhead. Well, actually, very a lot like Lionhead. Lion, uh, Lion's Head's worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, let's let's take a sombering look at this real quick. A lot of people that have, some of them worked at this studio for upwards of 10 years, just lost their job. That's very, very sad. And mm -hmm. uh, Fable Legends was, what from what it looked like, a passion project. I'm not a fan of Fable. I'm, I've never been a fan of Fable. I thought it was a bad game series, in my opinion, especially when Peter Molyneux was working on it. But I respect the fact that it had its fans. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, yeah, officially at the 10-year mark, pretty much to the day of the 10-year mark, uh, they closed their studios. So that's, that's very, very sad across the board. <clears throat> and, Peter, and one of the studios that Peter Molyneux... Uh, pretty much started is just hit the chopping block which speaks something about peter molyneux that he seems to i don't know what it's been in the past couple decades but he seems to be torturing whatever he touches i don't know why that is yeah with it just it thoughts that had popped into my head between um you know this news and uh just other updates in regards to his current projects it just makes me happy that he's you know, nowhere near No Man's Sky, just because, I mean, <laughs> the, I, like, I mean, knowing what he said, the kinds of things he said about Fable, you know, he had a, such a reputation for promising the world and delivering, you know, a shoebox with um, twine in it. Uh, d never mind. <laughs> um, just knowing what he would, the things he would say about No Man's Sky and that, no, no, guys, seriously, this is the this is the final video game. There will be no... I'm just glad he's just nowhere... He's just in no way associated with that. Because if you think that game has a hype train now, just... Uh, yeah, just Peter one of the, one of the things I'm happy we don't have to deal with. 
No, no. no, no well, no, we don't have to. We're but... just talking about how Peter Molyneux is the king of if the of the broken promise, the overhype, and the uh, really. Oh, Peter, the indis- can't indisputed do, champion. They, they can't. They can't do that in games yet. They just can't. Oh, but, but my game can't. No, no, Peter. No, it can't. So, Man, you know what? There uh, supposedly there are stories where he would go to like E3, hype a game to high heaven, and then go back to his dev studio. And supposedly his developers will say, "What did you promise?" And you realize we can't do any of that. And he supposedly would shrug his shoulders, say, "Well, I hope we can by the time it's released. Date. The game's coming out in four months, Peter. It's not happening." Yeah, uh, you know, and I think I think some of the a lot of the stories have been reporting that you know the, they're going to try and find homes for a lot of the teams uh, at Lionhead in Xbox and, and other divisions. So you know, I think that a lot of you know a lot of those people are going to land on their feet, and a lot of the folks who have a lot of really good creative talent and ideas are going to find somewhere a better outlet for. Those games, I think Lionhead really kind of got pigeonholed into the we are the Fable Studio, and there's not much else we can do outside of that. And I, I think it's going to be good for a lot of those folks to get out into another environment where they can work on something else uh, instead of just having to continually work on the next Fable thing, which mm-hmm. just is a franchise. Right, and it never really got out of that legacy. I feel right, and never kind of got out from under the, you know, the the huge, you know pie in the sky promises I think that were always kind of they were always kind of you know dominating the narrative about that game so you know people they 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 you know a lot of people really like those games I don't have a ton of experience with them but I know that you know the deep in the back of people's heads they had never lived up to the what they had been you know the stories that they had been told about what this game was going to be and I, I don't know I don't think that I'm not sure how much of that kind of sense really plays into the closure of the studio I think just you know the fact that we have I think really... it's an albatross constantly around the studio's neck that it's the studio of broken promises. I think that'll yeah, and, and that's mostly thanks to Peter Molyneux. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I what I was thinking. It's just it's <coughs> it it's just kind of you know, it's kind of hard to deal with something a reputation like that. Um, they were definitely the butt of a lot of jokes because of the legacy that Peter Molyneux left at that studio. So I think that yeah. If anything, it's a it's a good thing for the people who work there to be able to work on something without that hanging over their head all the time, like Stan was saying. Bingo. Yeah, so they hopefully they find different uh, different gigs at different places. Yeah. And they get back on their feet quickly. Absolutely. You know, let, hope for the best, Lion's Head. Um, you know, this actually leads into a bigger thing, and I realize this is a bit unscripted because it doesn't follow the show notes at all. I'm sorry, Josh. Oh my god. Yep. I'm, having a panic. I'm off script. Wait, I'm you just rogue. spoiled the dirty secret of unscripted gaming that were somewhat partially scripted. How? Oh my god. Oh boy. Uh, we have we have show notes. We have we're going to talk about this topic. <laughs> hey. Maybe we'll transition into this topic, but we have no idea how we're going to talk about And partially about scripted doesn't make as good of a title. Yeah, so that, speaking of unscripted, okay, um, this point. leads to a bigger topic, at least to a much bigger topic. It wasn't just Lion's Head that got closed down. Microsoft has removed eight of their first party studios from their website listing. There is speculation going around the internet that Microsoft is likely transitioning away from console gaming. That is the bigger story. You don't just shut down Lion's Head Studio, a first party that you've had for 10 years without an explanation. But Phil Spencer said, I'm sorry, but at this moment, I cannot provide any explanation. And the Microsoft Studios website took off eight other studios along with, I mean, seven other studios along with Lion's Head. There's a lot of rumors going around, and I think justifiably so. Is the company trimming the fat? They're getting a lot leaner. Are they reconsidering their investment strategy into uh, the console market? Because it's, as we all know, Microsoft isn't just a, con- a video game company. They're a huge monolithic software and hardware company. Mm-hmm. And well, I think I, I think that kind of uh, might go ahead. I think um, I don't know. You know, obviously we're just kind of uh, kind of theorizing here. But I think Stan, you know, he, I think he certainly got a point that it, you know, if they're certainly not, you know, shutting down the Xbox as a console, you know, completely. I think they're definitely taking another look at it, you know, with 
um, how they've been, you know, talking about Windows 10, you know, unifying the Microsoft, um, you know, kind of environment. Uh, and you know, so you see, you see now, you know, when I when I look on, I, I have Windows 10 running, and I have, you know, an Xbox application. So I think I think moves like that, <laughs> excuse me, um, definitely kind of indicate that they're definitely transitioning into how they think about the Xbox as a brand. I yeah. think there's, and it's, I don't know if we'd be. It, it, I think Stan makes a, a pretty pretty solid point here in because I don't think we'd be having this conversation if the Xbox One was selling like the PS4. Thoughts? It's definitely not. It's and, and you can uh, see that too in the fact that they are uh, releasing a version of uh, Forza Motorsport on PC on Windows 10 and they have said that all Forza Motorsport moving forward will also be available on Windows 10. Also, a big note that you didn't mention, Forza coming to Windows 10 is free to play. Well, it's not a sixty dollar game. But because it, it's a partial game, it's not the full Forza Six. It's it's a it's a subset of the cars and tracks. But the 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 Forza's coming forward will be the full game, and you will pay for those. But yeah, this this is kind of a easy way for them to onboard players into the the Forza game. <laughs> right. But I I. I kind of disagree with you a little bit on the them transitioning out of console gaming. Uh, I'm not saying it is. I'm saying that there are rumors and speculations yes. flying about that. I don't think they're justified, but I do yeah. think rumors are are justifiably cropping up. Yes, I'm not but saying I, they're right I, at I all. think uh, it's you know, with them recently having come out and talking about potentially upgrading the Xbox hardware, and 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 some speculating out there that you know they might even look at it as the kind of uh, way that the cell phone and tablet market kind of go about it, you know, with the updating the hardware every year or two kind of situation. I think mm -hmm. that's a more likely scenario so that they can keep up with the PC gaming and they can deliver a great experience year after year and, you know, have something that runs the legacy stuff but has that extra power that somebody who's willing to pay for it can then get and get the benefit from so that they don't have a console that is already behind the eight ball and just continues to fall further behind. They can still unify it under the, the Xbox One name, but update have an have a avenue to update the hardware. I think we're going to see the consoles shifting in how they work while we're still in this physical media age before we go full streaming. Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, kind of like we said, you know, we don't, I don't think it's, you know, entirely, uh, I don't think they would entirely just drop out uh, right a after this generation, which, you know, the, especially with how much they've invested in, you know, initially in the, ex in the launch of the Xbox One, but also, uh, you know, how much, you know, damage control they've done in terms of, you know, <laughs> Looking at the criticism it received at launch with, you know, a built-in uh, camera, you know, with the Kinect and, you know, microphones, kind of, and having that mandatory on online-only connection and just all the messaging associated with that. I think all the work that they've done to really get, to build trust back up with the consumers, to not, I think to not build on that with uh, a retooled Xbox down the road here, um, I think that would be kind of a missed opportunity. Um, so, I guess, but I do think it is, I, I definitely think Microsoft is thinking long terms about, you know, how much longer is it going to be before, you know, your console bot, your console, like your, your, your set-top TV box and your PC, you know, how long is it going to be before those things converge and just become the same device and you have one thing that's going to be doing all of this and I think part of the reasons why you're seeing um, no you know not related to the studio closures but you're seeing this kind of convergence between the Xbox one and Windows 10 and is kind of them looking f towards those trends and trying to become really not just your only box in your living room but the only box in your house yeah and I, I it'll be definitely interesting to see what they do going forward in the next few years trying to figure out the legs of the new console market and 
and what does it look like in this age where the the PC has finally really gotten ahead of the consoles and mm-hmm. them trying to find their place at a consumer friendly price point. So exactly, uh, and we'll see. Exactly, and just and, and a lot of the advantages that people had always preached about consoles having are, you know, but you know, ease of getting games, uh, cost of actually, you know, building a PC. You know, it's it's easier than ever to learn how to do that and to get those resources. Things like Steam make library management and just getting games incredibly easy. So, yeah, it is going to be interesting to see. It'll be interesting, but uh, we'll be right back after this jaunty tune with some more unscripted gaming. And we're back. All right, so uh, moving on, uh, this is sort of breaking news. We, we kind of uh, read this like just before we started recording, uh, but the studio that was creating the Rising Thunder, the robot uh, kind of beginner fighting game uh, was purchased uh, by the folks at Riot uh, and they have officially cancelled Rising Thunder and are going to be putting that team to work on another project. Don't know what that project is but they will be working on something else. So Rising Thunder uh, will not be getting released unfortunately for those of you looking for that entry level fighting game uh, with a cool little mech twist to it. Was it in alpha or beta or something? Uh, I think it was in alpha. I remember watching some streams of it. Uh, I think it might have been a a late alpha, early beta build that they were they were out testing and having people play. Man, uh, it just never looked impressive to me. But you know, they Riot probably bought them for their uh, their um, infrastructure engine that they created. The oh. GGOP, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the official name but yeah i would imagine that's pretty pretty close to why uh yeah ggpo yeah they had good net code behind them and that game ran pretty pretty well even in its early form and you know yeah it's not an not the most impressive game but i felt like it was a very uh i don't want to say simple but it, it definitely onboarded players in a very good way and i think that's something that a lot of fighting games don't and I'm not saying that they probably would have been the best to do that, but I think that was a good way for people to start learning some of the basics of fighting games in a less hostile environment and a less uh, daunting one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then to kind of, you know, transition and find out if the fighting game genre was really something for them. So uh, I'd definitely be interested to see what Riot's doing acquiring a studio like that and putting them on a project, putting them on a new project, you know, they're, they really only do league, so it'll be interesting to see what they kind of got uh, got in the can there and are preparing for uh, preparing for us here in the near future. Any last thoughts? I mean, you know, pretty pretty straightforward. It's just a uh, pretty interesting. You know, I guess if people if people are kind of looking, you know, it's it's a little different from Rising Thunder, but uh, there's a game called Dive Kick, uh, which is kind of <laughs> It's a very it's a very silly game, but it's a very it's a kind of you c- it can kind of teach you the same kind of like lessons about fighting fighting games on kind of a meta level, but it is also a very very silly game because you have dive and kick and that's all you do. So it's a little The team that created Dive Kick were purchased by someone. Yeah, I don't I forget who or remember why. off the top of my head, but you should look up some footage of that game. It's Kind of it. It just Rising Thunder in general kind of reminded me of the brief time I spent with Dive Kick and realizing, oh boy, this is a thing, all right. <laughs> and that's kind of that's kind of it. That's all I got. Did you guys play Dive Kick? Uh, I, I I played a little little bit of it. Dive Kick. I, 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 <laughs> I played it and. Uh... I liked it, but it's one of those games where after 15 minutes, the novelty like instantly wears off. Yep. Yeah. Dive a kicker. <laughs> Dive a kicker. Okay, what's next? Anyway, so hey, did you guys hear about that? Uh, the Coleco retro console that Coleco Vision had had kind of uh, commissioned to recreate a. Ca- cartridge-based console that was going to be kickstarted and released here in the next few years. Uh, I saw it. I laughed at it. I ignored it. So, 
interesting concept. Uh, and a few weeks ago, there was a prototype release, and people were looking at it and kind of doing some sleuthing, and they said, hey, that really just kind of looks like a Super NES in that shell. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. And they said, no, it's not. Here, we're going to be transparent about what's going on here at this, this small company putting together this prototype. So they literally made a transparent shell for that. Wow. So, uh, can I go, internet... sh should I go make some popcorn real quick? Yeah, I, I so the... I've got a good popcorn. feeling about this. So, so <laughs> the internet sleuths being what they are, especially people, you know, with, uh, who love their hardware, saw the card that was in the clear Jaguar shell, and were like, hey, that's just a PCI capture card. They immediately took the photo down. And oh, Malika boy. Said, <laughs> Malika said they were sending an independent team of investors because the, the, the Kickstarter was supposed to start, I think, this week. Uh, uh -oh. They said, oh, they've pushed it back so many times. Yeah, so Coleco said we're going to go in and see what's going on, make sure everything's on the up and up. We are, we are paying this independent uh, researcher and uh, – the, the team that is behind, that's doing the prototype, they can't delay this person. The only person who can delay the inspectors going in or us. Well, Coleco terminated the project. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, okay. I mean, I haven't even gone into the weeds of this thing, but I am... I think you. I think I knew this was going to be canceled when you said the cartridge-based console. And I was like, what? Oh, I didn't... Oh, 2000... Two got here really fast. Wow. Yeah, I mean, so it, the update that 3DS still uses cartridges. Retro VC VGS has decided that the work they have created is not sufficient to demonstrate at this time. Ha! Ah. Basically, they've been ah. lying the entire time and actually uh. done the work that they said they were doing. <laughs> Which are you surprised? No. Is anyone surprised? Did anyone expect anything to come of this? Yes, but not... It, it's this. like, I feel like this is such a non-story. <laughs> we see, I, I, the angle I like here is that they technically didn't do a Kickstarter yet, so Stan can't blame Kickstarter. I No, Josh likes to blame Kickstarter. Right. I say <laughs> this is just a dumb idea. It's not their fault. They didn't have a chance to fuck it up yet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's room in this world for a solid retro, con you know. And there, there are things out there like the Retron that do, you know, you can you can put a card in and it'll dump the ROM and it'll emulate the software. <coughs> and I think I think there's room in the world for a good piece of hardware that runs legacy cartridges and that can also support new cartridges because there are people out there who will put packs on carts to play on old on old hardware. So I think there's... That's fun! It's it, it's not a big market, but I think there's a market for it. There is a market for it, absolutely. But I I feel like there they could have... Caligo could have had a better handle on what was going on and knowing that they were just putting SNES, SNES motherboards in a Jaguar shell and saying, oh, this is the prototype. No, it's not. Uh, just make, just print like making circuits and boards and stuff like that is easier than it's ever been in the history of electronics. Just fucking do the work. No, the the R and D to actually make a working console, that is the most expensive part of selling any video game system. The research and development. Absolutely. Once you actually, but here's yeah, the thing so is you're you're doing it with legacy hardware and stuff that you have access to so <coughs> i'm not saying it's not hard but i'm saying it's a lot easier because there's so much documentation on how that stuff works and and what was needed and, and how it ran and all that so mm -hmm. uh, i think they probably created a lot more work for themselves and a lot more heartache than than if they just actually done the work that coleco had tasked them with doing to put this hardware oh. together. Or they could just... I don't know who was the brainiac <laughs> that thought this. No one wants their Steam indie games on the cartridge. There, there might be... Tell you what. Tell you what. I take that back. There might be people out there that physically want their indie games on cartridge format just for the sake of uh, 
proprietary. Not if I, proprietary. You know, if I had a CRT and and a and a retro console like this, I would love to play Undertale on that. I would love to play Downwell on something like that because I think that'd be pretty fucking cool and a nice nostalgia trip for somebody like myself. Yeah, but it's. I mean, is this thing gonna be more than just a nostalgia trip for like ten minutes? I mean, that's the that's the question here. At least yeah, it's one. It's so niche, it's kind of unneeded. Like, it, it's niche to the point where it, if you want to take a nostalgia trip with old games, that's what emulators are for. And emulators, the legal ones that you can get from, like, Nintendo or Sony or Xbox, the market is so saturated with them, you don't even have to search hard anymore. So... Why bother? But there, but there, Just, there, there are there are things about emulators that they they don't that they're for purists. They don't emulate everything perfectly because of the fact you can't play it on a CRT or the way that it runs games. So I'm glad you brought that up, Josh. There, there's a there's a there's a market for it. And I think that Nintendo brought up in the Nintendo Direct that coming. In the end of March to the beginning of April, they're going to start releasing Super Nintendo games that are now going to have pixel-perfect transitions. What more can you ask for? You can't play that on a CRT. And there oh. are people who want to play those games on a CRT. And I can't use leaded gas in my car. There's a certain point <laughs> where you have to move on! <laughs> I saw somebody getting rid of a CRT outside of my apartment a few weeks ago, and I almost picked it up because I wanted to oh, boy. my Super Nintendo into it, but I decided oh, not I, to go down that rabbit hole. You can plug your Super Nintendo into <laughs> any TV. But it's better on a CRT. <laughs> oh! And then you go F yourself! It turns off and it like makes your hand staticky. It's great. <laughs> It gets all fun. What is with you? Oh boy. Well, uh, good luck with that. We're gonna move forward. Yeah. We're gonna move on. Yeah. So, last thing I wanted to talk about, speaking of Japanese companies releasing video games, uh, Amazon Japan is now allowing game sales outside of Japan. I know Stan doesn't think this is a story, but I think this is cool because I think it is going to open up exporting games to a wider audience and I know it's never been easier to do that but there are there are specific export sites that do that a lot of times you do have to kind of buy something to convert your US dollars to, to, to yen to go about that and they you know pay for shipping and whatnot but buying it straight through Amazon is something that everybody's familiar with very easy to do Google Translate you know will translate the whole page for you uh, I think it's gonna be <coughs> A lot easier to get Japanese games out of Japan and into the hands of people who want to play them especially now that we live in an era where the consoles are so region free that that it's easy to play I think that's really I think that's a really neat little little development just to to make that process a little easier for for standard consumers who want to kind of experiment with the wacky shit that comes out of Japan from time to time the reason why I said this is such not that not that much it's more of a non-story to me is because the people that want to buy import games already know how to access them. You go to playasia.com, you buy whatever import game you want, and it's cheap, it's simple. You don't have to do a bunch of currency conversion. It does it all for you. It takes about three weeks to two weeks to get shipped to you because you know it's coming from Japan. <laughs> I just find that you know th this is good because it opens up competition. Like right now, it, Play Asia kind of has the marketplace on lockdown for independent games. And you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Maybe there should be an easier way, and Amazon is a way that people are familiar with. But I feel like, I feel like this is saying, hey, there's a competition to Walmart. Well, oh, that's cool. There's already been a Walmart. Yeah, at least for yeah, yeah, as an example, I hate Walmart by the way. But as an example, yeah. But at least for me, you know, I, I you know. I don't have a console, so it doesn't really matter for me. But like, if I were seeing a Japanese game that I'd be interested in getting, I'd feel much more comfortable going through Amazon than Play Asia. Even though I know thousands of people use Play Asia as a very fairly reputable site, I still am more comfortable with Amazon handling my payment processing and my international shipping than than somebody like that. So, and again, I know this is an era where it's never been easier to import a game, but this is just making. But now it's. Extra even, even easier. It's something a lot of people are very familiar with. So, uh, you know, 
not not anything we need to spend any more time on. But I think it's just I think think it's something neat. It's a neat little it is thing. Something neat. Yeah. You know what so else is I neat? Talk oh about... wait. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. Sorry, we're not done. Oh. We're not done. You got the transition. Go no, ahead, no, get no. it done. Just, just, just do it. Just stand, go. stand, just, go. Stand, go. Do it, please. You wanted to talk about something else. I want to talk about. Uh, I like the way Mike worded this, so I'm going to totally steal it from him wholesale. I want to talk about Tom Clancy's Destiny. <laughs> save it. Save it for the next episode. We'll save it for the next one. Or do really? you talk about it? No, let's talk about it now. Fuck it. Let's do it. Oh, that because... is. Okay. All right. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. You're, you're making my job difficult. There's either going to be a lot of editing or a lot of talk about us editing. <laughs> either way. <laughs> We're gonna see how lazy I am. Um, <laughs> I haven't played the game. So yet. No, I haven't played the there. beta. I haven't I have played watched, it on PS4. I have not played any of the game, beta or otherwise, but I have watched a fair amount of it streamed on IGN, GameSpot, and Giant Bomb. So that's my where I'm at with Destiny as of this recording. Er, so here's Division. my problems with Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, just gonna see. call it Destiny. <laughs> It's basically Destiny. It's it's basically Destiny except with modern guns, which, by the way, doesn't work in my opinion. Because when I want to shoot someone in the head in the Tom Clancy game, I assume they die. And if that doesn't happen, I don't think I'm playing a game where Tom Clancy's name should be on the title. That's all. That's all I gotta say about that particular subtitle. Moving forward to the game itself, couldn't help but notice there were no advanced review copies for the game. For a giant AAA game that took five plus years to develop, that should be a giant red flag to everybody. Literally everybody that thought they were going to play the game. No advanced yeah. review copies? That did... No. No, go ahead. Yeah. That did seem a little strange, because, you know, if I understand correctly, uh, the servers did not go live for... Uh, you know, even if pe reviewers had gotten copies early, the servers uh, actually necessary to play the game didn't really go live until about the seventh or the eighth which was the the street release date of the game so again like yeah. like as stan had been saying you know it is kind of it is kind of strange to see um i mean such a large game kind of you know not have that forward feed that kind of you know same day of launch reviews coming in because generally when game you know it's Generally, you're going to see review copies of games go out pretty early if this, if you if you know you're pretty confident in it, and uh, yeah, you know because they, they if they know it's going to be five stars across the you know across the board, you know obviously you're going to want to make sure everyone has plenty of time to play that game. Um, so it is. I mean, you know, I don't know if this is just purely a technical issue. If they feel like it wouldn't be, they couldn't really get fair review scores. Um, you know, if people. So here's the reasoning they gave. Um... This is the same thing that happened to Destiny 2. <laughs> and uh, what, what uh, Bungie's reasoning, or I believe it was Microsoft's reasoning, was this game would not produce the same experience if uh, the game is played on a partially populated server as opposed to a fully populated server. That's Knowing ridiculous. what we know of Destiny now, we that all is, know that's straight bullshit. <laughs> that is actually ridiculous. We all know the social tower can't hold more than 15 people at a time. So what in the hell are you talking about? That's, all right, that's... Yeah, that's... <laughs> so, th again, that with, what all this just leads me to believe here, you know, I'm sure, that, you know, the Division could be, you know, a very... I'm sure it's a, a pretty solidly great built game. It looks pretty... You know, it's a pretty nice-looking game. It looks you know, pretty solid mechanically. But it's just, you I'm know, glad it's, you said that, Mike. It's just kind of hard to, you know, like, what, what, what does this mean? Does this, are they hiding the fact that there's only, like, it's one neighborhood, or, it's, what's going on? You should fucking know how to release a game without the servers catching on fire every single fucking it's not like this game didn't take half a decade to make. You think you'd want some positive, or you think you'd want legitimate reviews about the game? Uh, I believe Total Biscuit said this two years ago, or maybe a year ago, and everyone should follow it. If a game doesn't send advanced review copies to credible reviewers or large gaming outlets, at the least, do not buy it day one. You are the guinea pig 
for a bad experience. Yeah, my, I, you know, I am, I am very interested in the division, but I am, I am, I have, I have told myself that I'm going to wait at least a week or two to kind of see how it shakes out, see what people say. You know, it's not one of those games I don't really think you need to be in day one to really get a good experience in. So I'm gonna let yeah. it kind of shake out and see what happens, you know, and and maybe it's maybe it's gonna be, you know, just like Destiny Year One. It's gonna be shit, and then they'll come out with the Taken, the Taken, Broadway subway. It'll be great. <laughs> um, so if you're the don't buy the Giuliani. PC version, I, I can't speak oh, for the boy. PS4 or Xbox version, but according to every Steam review I'm reading on the PC version of the Division, Ubisoft has d released a buggy and broken PC version of their own game. Unfortunately. And it, they have done also, it yet again. I'm, I'm reading a story on Kotaku. I was just kind of browsing through. Uh, tr <laughs> the division is already racked with some griefing trolls uh, because apparently trolls can stand in the opening doorway to the, yes. the opening safe house and make it almost impossible for people to leave. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's horrible. I can't believe someone would do that. There are people on here, since the game has been out, at least where I'm living, for the past 19 and a half hours, there are people already sending reviews with about 15 hours on record. Uh, <laughs> I'm just reading a text message Josh sent me. I'm not going to repeat it. But <laughs> I'm a lovely face right now. <laughs> this kills the mic. <laughs> um... The reviews I'm reading is that it's broken, it's buggy, it's boring. The servers were down on launch because, of course, they were. <laughs> and the game is unplayable. If the servers are down and it has to connect to Uplay servers, you can't play your $60 game. Because that's what you want to see the day one of your game. Well, it's I not think a game it is released in the modern era if the servers aren't fucking yeah. on fire. I think it is always <laughs> it is it's something you know big games and MMOs and ha have been dealing with forever. It's just it's just the the classic debate between you know you know that your you your peak numbers will never be as high as they are on launch day, so you don't need to. You you it's not cost effective to invest in that infrastructure. To support that amount of people beyond launch day, uh, but that uh, what that is always going to create is a shitty launch day experience. So you can't tell I me will... they ain't got a free rack of servers somewhere that they could turn hold on, on and hold make on. it does not work. I have to say this. I have to say this. I do not advertise what company I work for on the podcast because those are two separate entities. But I will say there are companies out there that release massive multiplayer games that require hundreds of thousands of people online that do work day one. Ubisoft does not have an excuse here. Yeah, I, I think I it's know. I think it's an ex it's it's something that's happened a lot in the past. But I think it's it, like Josh has been saying, it's 2016. When is if when, when is game without your service can on we, fire? Can, just, I mean, just, uh, just they can be on fire a little bit. They can be war they can be hot. They can be toasty. I want them to be. I fire. want your super your servers to be super hot. Stop. That, but they okay. don't need to be on fire. Um, I did also just before we totally get off of the division here. I I know that U we had mentioned that the PC port isn't great, and I know that they've had Ubisoft in the past has had trouble with. Uh, their PC ports of previous games. I know that um, I, I, when, in my playthrough of Far Cry 4, I didn't run into any issues in particular, but I know some people have had a lot of uh, pretty rough issues with um, some Ubisoft ports in the past. So to hear, so if 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 we're getting a lot of PC bug reports um, on another Ubisoft, you know, PC patch or uh, release, that's another just kind of disappointing facet here. Uh huh. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be very interested to see how this kind of this story shakes out over over the next few weeks and see where this goes because I'm I, I'm very I was very excited about Destiny and I'm I'm very hopeful but you know at the end of the <laughs> the division oh my god I'm, I know I'm I was gonna I'm let him fly I wasn't gonna correct him at all <laughs> I know we could we could seriously just take out the names of these games and just see how it how it goes just take I, out all the, the identifying division. information and just have the same conversation. <laughs> I feel. I feel looter like we're shooters. That's what they're called. They're called looter shooters. We we're we're playing the same story out, and 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 Bungie tried to tried to warn them, but nobody listened. 
Anyway, I'm very Maybe. interested to see what happens. I really hope they kind of fix it because I'd really like yeah. to play this game. But if I don't I get to, then I don't get to. I don't. I they don't did. I, I, I want to give credit where credit's due. There was a massive open beta for this game two weeks before it came out. I, I and you gotta know the, give credit where and, it's and due. And they, the, the, everything coming out of the mm -hmm. beta was incredibly positive. But mm -hmm. a lot of it was, is there enough here to keep this going after this time period? And and how's it going to shake out at launch? Right now, those signs aren't good. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you can't, if your own server, if your third-party server, like, I don't know about you guys, but when I buy a game, I want to play the game without having to log in through a third-party server. But if yeah. your third-party server, you play, can't handle people logging into their game to play it, it's time to nix the third-party server. If I bought a game on Steam, I want to play it through Steam. If I bought it on Uplay, then I have to play it through Uplay. Same I agree. thing for Origin. I yeah. agree. It's it's not fair to players. It's never been fair. No one likes Uplay. Nobody likes Uplay. Nobody. I'm not even sure if Ubisoft likes Uplay, to be honest. <laughs> it's just like a Stockholm Syndrome kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not like them putting it on Uplay makes it any more secure or anything like that. It just makes it more obtuse. It just makes Absolutely. it more likely to crash. Bad Ubisoft. Mm -hmm. Bad. Yeah, and I mean, I'm certainly in the same position here for you, Josh. I, I, I don't. I hope there are more good games. I don't want to root for games to be bad. I want games to be good. And man, I hope. I hope you know the all. The, I hope we're just laughing at these things we're saying in two weeks when they've nailed everything, fixed everything, and it's an awesome game. But you know. There's a lot of, you know, where there's smoke, there's, there's fire, so we'll, and there's we'll, a lot of ifs. we'll keep our eye on it. And yeah. we'll, you can, know. I, can I just say that the reason, the <clears throat> Ubisoft's reasoning of not giving advanced review copies of, we wanted, ever, we wanted this to simulate an actual online experience with the servers full. If people are being auto-queued to log into their server, and then when they get queued, and they're crashing at the creator character, maybe that truly is the review you should um, give to the game. Maybe Ubisoft did us a favor. <laughs> well, we, we will check back with that in, in two weeks, and we'll would, see. Well, yeah, let's do that. Let, no, no, let's, let's put a pin in that. Let's check yeah. back in two weeks. You know what you should check back with, though, immediately? Our social media pages. It's not bad. Thank you. Thank you. You can follow us on Facebook at Unscripted Gaming. Just type it in the search box. At Twitter at Unscript underscore gaming. And you can subscribe here right here to the YouTube channel to get updates on all of our videos posted. Mike, I love the face you're pulling right now. Uh, I know. I killed you I can't. <laughs> someone stop him. He's a menace. Uh, but uh, that, this has been Unscripted Gaming. Thank you for listening. I'm Josh. I'm Mike. I'm Stan. Peace. Peace. Play good games.
thanks for that. The worst creatures seem to come out at night. And thanks again for killing all those unnatural bastards. If you don't mind being a chicken shit, go ahead and set up camp by that water pump. You might just survive a little longer. Hey, stop shooting your gun at me. The game is out there, idiot. <laughs> 